This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 196. How to fight your way back to health after a bad diagnosis. 11 Crucial Tips, part one, by Mary Yuksh of goodlifezen.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hello, happy Monday, and a very happy belated Easter for those of you that celebrate. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots, lots more. It's just like a big audio book, but from a bunch of different authors. Now, the post I'm about to read to you is actually really close to my heart. We're gonna talk about how you can find health even after you've been diagnosed with a pre-existing condition. Why is that close to me? Well, For those of you that are long-time listeners, you already know, but for those of you who are new, when I was in college, I was diagnosed with a chronic disease, and I wasn't following a very healthy lifestyle at the time. So sometimes people will tell me, oh, Dr. Neil, you have it easy, you don't know what it's like, you're healthy. Well, actually, I work at it really, really hard, and I do know what it's like. I know what it's like not to follow a healthy lifestyle, to not feel your best, to have that underlying chronic disease, and to have to take medication every single day. In fact, it was that that propelled me into this field. This is why I educate others. This is why I do this show, is to learn from what I've done so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. All right, so that's all kind of a bummer. So I'm gonna share with you an inspiring quote before I jump into the post. Quote, from the bitterness of disease, man learns the sweetness of health. Anonymous. Really quickly, I'll just say one more thing. Before we hear part one of today's post, we're gonna have a lot of giveaways and announcements next week in celebration of all the milestones that our podcasts are hitting. So to get those updates and to be in the raffles, make sure you're on our mailing list at oldpodcast.com. All right, that's it. Let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. How to fight your way back to health After a Bad Diagnosis, 11 Crucial Tips, Part 1, by Mary Yuksh of goodlifezen.com. This is a good news story. It's the story of how I fought my way back to full health four years after receiving a bad diagnosis. Keep listening to hear 11 tips on how to give yourself the best chance of recovery. I don't usually say much about my health problems, as you'll understand when you listen to my tips in a moment, but I'm hoping that this post will benefit you or help someone you know. Some years ago, I began to have severe problems with the joints in my fingers and feet. I've always been very athletic, and at the time, I had been training for 18 years in karate and had just been promoted to fourth degree black belt. All that was about to change. I decided to consult a rheumatologist. Not just any rheumatologist, but the leading one in New Zealand who works in the Wakefield Clinic in Wellington, the capital of New Zealand. So I flew to Wellington, and let him examine me. He looked at my blood results and checked out the x-rays of my joints. Then he said in a deadpan voice as if talking about the weather, you've got lupus. Lupus? Oh, that doesn't sound too good. Well, lupus is a chronic inflammatory disease that can affect various parts of the body, especially the skin, joints, blood, and kidneys. You've now got it in your joints, but you have to prepare yourself for a bad prognosis you may end up in a wheelchair and some people finally die of organ failure. What? I started to cry. Now, don't get upset. We'll try and maintain your status quo with medication. They have some severe side effects, but that's just the way it is. Fast forward to now. I'm back to weekly karate training and I'm doing a scorching workout in the gym each week. I'm pretty well back to full strength and health. It may be that I was just lucky, but I think there are some things you can do to become lucky. Here are my 11 tips. Tip number one, challenge the diagnosis. Maybe your diagnosis is correct, but maybe it isn't. Make sure you get a second opinion. I went to another rheumatologist in Wellington, a Dr. Chu. At first glance, I wasn't impressed. He has a consulting room in a small shopping center with no receptionist or nurse. At times, he seemed to watch a TV screen during the consultation. I asked him about it, and he said he was keeping an eye on the till in the computer shop next door that also belongs to him. Not very reassuring, don't you think? But it turned out that he's a top diagnostician, much better than the posh guy I first went to. To my great relief, he assured me that it wasn't lupus, and he diagnosed me with rheumatoid arthritis instead, which still wasn't great news, but a lot easier to deal with than lupus. 
They are both disorders of the immune system. Tip number two, do your research. After my second diagnosis, I emailed my friends and students about it and did some research on the net. One of my Zen students contacted me and told me about a treatment adopted by a handful of rheumatologists worldwide. He said, check it out. A friend of mine tried it and she's now in remission. This is a treatment called antibiotic protocol and it follows the work and legacy of Thomas McPherson Brown, MD. He suggested treating rheumatoid arthritis with long-term, low-dose antibiotics. This treatment allowed my body to go into full remission over time. There aren't many medical practitioners who know about antibiotic protocol. For example, Dr. Chu is the only rheumatologist who follows this protocol in New Zealand. Tip number three, stop whining about it. Do you talk about your illness? My suggestion is to stop doing that. Every time you talk about your illness, it weakens your life spirit. The gritty part in you helps you to survive, the part that doesn't complain. Sometimes you may need to confide in a friend, but do that sparingly. Tip number four, don't settle for maintenance, go for improvement. I was in the gym a few days ago and at the end of a grueling session, my wonderful coach, Trevor Voice, was helping me to stretch. He said, you're quite flexible. That should be relatively easy to maintain. Maintain, I burst out. I'm not the slightest bit interested in maintenance, Trevor. I want to improve my flexibility. That's been my mindset right throughout these four years of fighting my way back to health. I suggest you adopt it too. Tip number five. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled How to Fight Your Way Back to Health After a Bad Diagnosis, 11 Crucial Tips by Mary Yuksh of goodlifezen.com. And like I promised, I'll finish the rest of the article tomorrow. Boy, tip number three, stop whining about it. Oh boy, that was totally me except that I wasn't following that tip. I was whining about it when I first got diagnosed. If there was a listening ear in sight, I would talk all about my diagnosis and the medications I had to take and how I didn't know what the future was gonna hold and probably bored those poor souls to death. I whined and whined and whined. Dinner with families would be all about me and my diagnosis. I would make it a point for people to know that I was gonna leave the table to take my medication, and then I'll be right back. It was like, well, my disease is constantly on my mind, so it should be on everybody else's too. So I can't imagine I was a good friend or son or brother or boyfriend at the time. And what's really interesting is nobody snapped me out of it. Nobody said, okay, we've heard enough. But it kind of came about over time where I realized it on my own. Although looking back, I kind of wish somebody did tell me to snap out of it sooner rather than later. But in the end, I did find when I would stop talking about it and stop thinking about it and focus on my career, focusing on my relationships, all of a sudden, the disease didn't seem so bad. Things really did start to look up. And so I love tip number three, if you didn't get that by now. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, we'll be giving away more books and have some big announcements at the end of the week and through next week for people on our mailing list. So if you wanna be entered into the raffle and get the updates from us, you just need to be a part of our weekly newsletter. You can join really quickly by entering your email address at our site, oldpodcast.com. That's it for today. Thank you as always for listening. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll continue this post and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember your optimal life awaits.